and Starlight Lanes and Flagstaff root for the title matches of today's JBT event. Here's a guy you've seen on the show a couple times, both ours and CBS's. It's Solomon Salama, back-to-back -back junior gold champ. Looking to open the Arizona conference season with the title, and he started a very gold-like with the front three. Taking on Keith Fung, the Fung house is still open late at night here in Flag. Just comes up a 250 to 220 win over Andrew Hall in the semifinals. So he's locked in, but uh, Solomon is almost always locked in. So it should be an interesting one. Handicap still in their semifinal game, so we'll tell more about them later. Here's a fun fact Solomon has as many junior gold titles as he has JBT titles, two each. Therefore, by a transfer of property, it is just as hard to win one JBT as it is to win junior gold. Bowling on Cheetah, post bowlers trying to get a very far to the edge break point. Keith using a little more tilt and a lot of ball speed. Solomon throwing urethane, which is the most aggressive ball he's ever thrown in his life. It's usually a target zone. Excellent spare shooter when he actually bothers to leave a spare. He maintains two-handed, oh wait a second, I believe that's reactive. So you ball up to the reactive for the spare, that makes sense, there we go. He's got Got himself an early lead though against the Fung in his senior season. Great career for him, six total JVT titles. He'd love to pile on a, at least that many this season if he can catch a roll. That ball is really solid. He's got a little miss room to the left, but if he gets it out there to that one two board, he's going to have a lot better carry. Even though it's early, it's kind of a key shot for him. You don't want to start running out of frames when you're playing catch up against Solomon, who has already won the U17 today. He is now 11 and 0 in U17 title matches. Not left again. No! Rips a messenger across. Still 15 or 16. He's got every opportunity to be the next big thing here out on tour. No shank, no devil, and that's a lot of tile to vacate this season. Get him a bit there. Acts like he didn't like it. Bit of a perfectionist. Like that. The ASU crew to my, is to my right, and they have set the over under at 466 for this game. Hope oh, there's a little juice there at 0.5. So we don't tie. Yeah. Alright, fair enough. Uh, well, halfway through we're at 2 team versus 2 0, so they got a lot more work to do to get to 4 6. Solomon qualified first today at plus 172. That's not that high for first. Pretty a little tricky on the cheetah today. First after 5 at plus 72, and then uh, 640 or so in the semis. That's 20 in the pit. Whoever has the over is happy about that. <laughs> Fung has lots of experience in high scoring title matches. He's had some thrillers over the years. Go uh, look out. Wow, that, that is a huge positive sign for Keith and the over. Because that ball was left at the lay down and the break and he got the setup that he was looking for there. He's got a good arrow at the break to play with and that's more than enough to yield high scores here. He's right in this match. And can crawl, crawl within four pins if he can strike here and make it a four bagger in the seventh frame. You betcha, wow. Bang, bang, dead flush versus dead flush. Two talented bowlers. Get zeroed in when it matters the most. <laughs> See if Salama can answer. Wow, cannot. <laughs> First really errant shot of the title match. I don't know if that was slow or if he came around it. There's a lot more traffic on the left side than there often is at tournaments today. There's a lot of high rev rate lefties entered this tournament too, so they've had to make more moves. 
during the semis, the lefties were moving left as they were getting some carry down. And there's the ball he often uses for his strike ball. Going at it with the spares here. Uh, he's in the 220s, but the count virtually evened up with that 7 count. And he's got a tricky little spare to shoot out here. Nope. Missed it off his hand. He knew it. Solomon has grounded himself. He's a perfectionist. No dinner for him. He's going to have a seat and think about it. So falls behind in the match, but still can punch for 244. Keith can get all the way to the 260, so advantage from at the moment. See if he can mentally regroup here. It's not a matter of physical at this point. They know where the one-two is. is. Body language tells the story. He liked that shot and got the half seven as a result. That's not what he was looking for in that ball. Advantage Fung. Not something we say very often when Solomon is the opponent. Uh, Perry's got a win by 19 over there. Looks like he's going to do so. So it's going to be Perry and Balea in the handicap title match. Make sure you watch that part of the video as well. Remains two-handed at his spares. That face needs no further commentary, does it? 466 got a lot more unlikely there, I'm afraid, too. Still in the wood, but we'll see. Much more importantly, Keith Fung's got himself a golden opportunity to open the Arizona Country season with the title here. Keep making shots. Must, must, must keep the ball speed up. Smile on his face tells the story. Hit up just a pinch on that, but he's got a hold spot right now that is uh, putting him on cruise control. He was talking to Andrew after his match, and they were talking about he missed in. He, he intended to move in just to check it, and missed in from there, and got it to hold. And he has taken full advantage of that discovery with a five bagger and closing in on number seven. Well, that was the nail in the coffin shot, and he doesn't get it. Now he's got the same thing that Solomon missed to shoot out in the ninth. Again, Solomon moved for 234 now, and with that loss of count on that, Fung only had a 232 pace. So that went from the strength to win to holy cat, crud at something, I could need to double in the tenth to win. First things first, make this tricky spare. Nicely done. Characteristic for Solomon not to be able to recover there. He just lost that right hand lane, went from 247 to 37. 211 max. He's just going to need to keep it in the building in the 10th, even if Solomon strikes out. Kyle moves up the ladder once again. He's going to take on top seed Kendall for the handicap title. Stick around for that. The handicap difference, guys, is 52. Kyle's got to win by 52 to tie. 53 to win.
Oh, well, that open, by the way, also killed 466. So, uh, got it. I expect a coffee in the morning for my correct underpick. There we go. Got it. That's done. Well, you do not very often see Solomon start triple spare double and end up never mark, almost never marking again the rest of the game. Surprising. From 10th seed. Yeah. The media department reminds me that Keith was the cut today at uh, minus 21. Shot at 6.93 in the semis to jump into the ladder, and here he is jumping into the winner's circle. The Fung House will remain open oh, yeah. all night long. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. And what a surprise the fill ball carries. That never happens. I do remember when I thought he missed cut. We were back there. We were ready to go. He was ready. The Casino ship was, was imminent. <laughs> Kendall's throwing strikes and practice over that. That's going to put Fung in the 230s for title win number seven. Congrats to Keith. Handicap in part two. Make sure